Hello and welcome to Weather on the Go, all your weather coverage. Today here, uh, remember to like my video and subscribe and also leave your comments below here regarding the uh, severe weather potential and here any questions you have. But be sure to subscribe to my channel here. My goal is to get up to around 100 subscribers here by the middle to end of April here. So please help me out by doing that. I appreciate it here and also follow my coverage here as I will have your accurate weather forecast moving forward. And stick with me with the video here because I will be outlining going and diving deep into the severe weather potential this week as another multi-day severe weather outbreak looks likely across the deep south and southeast as we head into this week. Today's high temperatures here, much warmer across the south here into Texas. Temperatures in the middle to upper 80s to near 90. Also across Florida, some cooler air with northwest flow aloft still continuing across the northern plains, the Great Lakes, and the northeast here states as we head into today. Tonight, temperatures will start inching up a little more here into the upper Midwest. Lows here into the middle 40s across central Illinois. Low to mid 50s across Oklahoma getting into Arkansas. And some cooler weather up here into the northern and central plains where lows will drop into the 20s across the, the Dakotas, uh, Minnesota, down into Nebraska here as well. The Storm Prediction Center's Day 1 outlook shows here a slight risk zone of severe weather from southwestern Oklahoma into northwest Texas here. This does include areas just around the Oklahoma City area, El Reno, Moore, Oklahoma, getting down toward Fort Sill and Lawton, and then getting down here just around the Wichita Falls area and back just towards the uh, Lubbock area, maybe just east of there, and also in toward Midland, Texas here. And then as we head into tomorrow, a much higher risk of severe weather across the deep south here with an enhanced risk of severe weather, including the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, Texarkana, Shreveport, getting over toward Jackson, Mississippi, down towards here, uh, maybe just north of Baton Rouge, Lafayette. These areas be on guard for the threat of severe weather with a slight risk zone covering just areas just outside of there, back toward Wichita Falls, Austin, Texas, maybe just here to the... Uh, to the south and west of Birmingham and Tuscaloosa, there is a marginal risk here as well. Also a marginal risk down here into Houston and getting farther south here towards San Antonio. With regards to the tornado threat as we head to tomorrow here, a 5% zone of tornadoes from Dallas-Fort Worth, Texarkana getting up towards here, Lafayette, Louisiana, uh, portions here near Baton Rouge, Jackson, Mississippi, Hattiesburg. Got to watch out for some tornadoes, even as you get down here towards San Antonio, Waco, Texas, College Station, even down towards Houston here as well with time, maybe even Mobile, Alabama here later in the period here as well. The severe wind risk, winds that could be in excess of 60 or 70 miles per hour here are possible or even likely across the zone from uh, Dallas-Fort Worth and towards Jackson, Mississippi in the zone here of enhanced risk. And then the hail threat is a little lower in probability just due to the fact that these storms will be developing in the evening hours and moving its way here overnight. But still a large hail threat across northeast Texas, portions of north central Louisiana getting into western and southwestern portions of Mississippi, southern Arkansas, southern Oklahoma here as well. Well, and then here as we head into our Tuesday, the Storm Predictions Day 3 outlook shows a slight risk zone of severe weather with a continuance of the MCS moving here overnight across the southern states here from southern portions of Mississippi, south central Alabama, northwest Florida Panhandle into south central portions of Georgia and into southern portions here of South Carolina with a marginal risk here surrounding that. And then here another Day 4 outlook here shows this is Wednesday into Thursday here this next week showing a slight Light risk zone in a broad area from east central Tennessee into portions of southeastern Kentucky, getting up in here into the western Carolinas, much of Georgia and Alabama here included, also southeastern portions of Mississippi. So kind of the same zones that have had severe weather here day after day and week after week, continuing to see severe weather here across the deep south. And then here finally, as we get into our day five outlook from the Storm Prediction Center here, uh, Thursday into Friday this next week, a slight risk zone across the eastern Carolinas and into Virginia. Now, looking at the reflectivity for this here, showing thunderstorms developing later this afternoon and evening across Texas, some dry microburst potential, maybe a supercell here, a dry supercell potential here as we head into central and western Texas and into southwestern portions of Oklahoma, and then here across central portions of Oklahoma, where uh, there is more wind shear and more dynamics here in play, those storms could be a little longer lived here into the evening and overnight hours across those areas with a continued severe threat potential and on a scattered basis. 
and that will only continue as we head into the overnight hours. Then you look at the instability parameters here. There is enough instability, especially across southwest Texas, west central Texas, and getting up into southwestern Oklahoma for a few severe thunderstorms. Uh, instability on the order of 500 to maybe around 1,000 or more here joules per kilogram in these areas, and that will continue to uh, be the case as we head late in the period before the instability falls apart. A little bit of... Uh, of you know surface based cap kind of on the atmosphere across Oklahoma and Texas so a couple of these storms might have trouble developing especially again to Texas but ones that do develop could develop here into down uh, downbursts and also potentially here dry microbursts here as well with not a lot of precipitation because there's a lot of dry soil in Texas here as well uh, to take advantage of. And even the mixed layer here uh, cap on the atmosphere is still pretty impressive, especially in Oklahoma and central portions of Texas here into the overnight hours as well. Looking at the bulk shear output, there's enough shear for these thunderstorms to work with. Not impressive, pretty weak shear overall, but just enough to get these storms rocking and rolling, especially with the instability in place. So uh, do be mindful of that. There's enough ingredients for a slight risk zone, as the Storm Prediction Center has pointed out. But a couple of storms here, not all of these will be severe, but a couple of these could here produce, like I said, winds up to 60 miles an hour, some quarter size hail, maybe even a tornado here as we head into later today. Significant tornado parameter, not high. A couple of values up here into Oklahoma, southern Kansas. But other than that here, nothing really impressive looking here on the uh, model for output for today. So an isolated tornado is possible here, but it is non-zero threat. It's not likely, but it is a non-zero threat as we head into the uh, evening and overnight hours. Then as we head here into tomorrow, this is Monday afternoon. Thunderstorms will start to develop in southern Oklahoma, west central Texas here. And these storms will continue to grow upscale and consolidate into an MCS as we head into the evening and overnight hours, pushing eastward across southeastern Oklahoma, southwestern portions of Arkansas, northeast Texas. And a couple of these storms could be producing here some 60 to 70 mile an hour wind gusts, some quarter to half dollar size hail, and even a few tornadoes, especially along the southern flank of this line where some of these cells could become more discreet with each other, um, especially or even ahead of this MCS. Kind of a uh, QLCS, MCS kind of setup here as we head into the overnight hours. And then as we head into Tuesday, this is around midday. Day. This will continue to uh, push to the east across Mississippi, Alabama. Surge of wind could have kind of a bow echo and bowing structures with this here with a surge of wind that could be in excess of 60 or 70 miles an hour with this. Also some hail, some very heavy rain and a lot of frequent lightning with these storms as well as they continue to push off and start to slowly weaken as they push into Georgia around the Atlanta area getting down here into southeastern portions of Alabama and Florida here as well. Now, why is this the case as we head into tomorrow? Well, dew points will be rising to the low to mid-60s across southeast Texas into the portions of Louisiana, mid-50 dew points into southwestern, or sorry, southeastern uh, Oklahoma, rather, and this will continue here. Dew points could be up around 70 across the Houston area, getting up towards Waco, Texas, so a lot of fuel, a lot of here moisture, uh, moisture latent atmosphere for these storms to produce a lot of heavy rain across these zones, and that will continue here with uh, the Cape as we head into tomorrow, a lot more impressive than today here, you know, more widespread 500 to 1,000 plus joules per kilogram and really getting together here. Cape could be up around 2,000 in localized spots here across central and east Texas and that will only be the case as we head into the overnight hours. So a lot of fuel for these storms to work with and a lot of uh, shear parameters coming together a lot more than today for a more widespread zone of severe weather tomorrow. Numerous severe thunderstorms from northeast Texas, east central Texas and into southeastern portions of Oklahoma. The highest values here with the wind shear um, getting up around you know 60 to 70 knots in spots so some pretty high wind shear values are going to maintain this mcs as we push to the east and looking downstream the mcs here is going to maintain itself because of all that wind shear pushing east and then here you got all the instability pushing east as well which will kind of maintain the mcs here across those areas into the environment farther to the east across arkansas louisiana mississippi and uh, alabama and further to the east even into georgia here as well now, the supercell composite as we head into tomorrow is higher across east central Texas than anywhere else, but a couple of your values showing up around Louisiana, Arkansas, southeastern portions of Oklahoma. So do be on guard for that. Some decent values for some supercells, some decent values for significant tornadoes. 
I would not be surprised if there was a strong tornado, especially if you're, uh, there is, you know, enough discrete, uh, discrete mode with the here, uh, supercells as they develop along this MCS as we head into tomorrow. So that here will be need to be monitored. And then the hodographs, not too terribly impressive. The most impressive ones here down into portions of Southeast Texas where a little bit of wind shear is expected, uh, but not too, uh, not as curved here as we saw last week with a few significant tornadoes here that occurred there, but enough to where a few tornadoes are possible. Potentially a severe and strong tornado here is possible as well as we head into tomorrow night. And that will be a nighttime threat. So you do want to keep your weather radios handy, your devices uh, here on and going, and here have alerts on the TV in any uh, way you can here overnight tomorrow when you get these severe thunderstorm warnings and tornado warnings here as well to keep you on your toes. The, like I said, the downstream air mass is going to be pretty... Uh pretty unstable across portions here of Louisiana into central and southern Mississippi, central and southern here Alabama into the northwest Florida panhandle. Instability values really growing across central and southern Mississippi into Louisiana. Instability around 2,000 to 3,000 locally joules per kilogram, so more than enough energy. That is here moderate to high Cape values across these areas, and that will cover much of here Mississippi and Alabama and even into Georgia, the northwest Florida panhandle as we head into the overnight hours. A lot of shear here across these areas, around 60 plus here uh, knots, so some pretty good shear values, and that will kind of maintain this MCS and QLCS as it pushes to the east here downstream with the downstream air mass here that unstable. Now the supercell composite as we head into Tuesday afternoon is looking pretty impressive here. I would not be surprised if the Storm Prediction Center upgrades this area here to a enhanced risk as we head into tomorrow's outlook here um, by the Storm Prediction Center, but it's showing some pretty Impressive values of supercell composite across your southern portions of Alabama, south central portions of Mississippi, northwest Florida panhandle, and some significant tornado parameters even a couple days ahead showing some pretty high values across central and southern Mississippi, eastern Louisiana, southern and central portions here of Alabama as well, including Mobile, Alabama, Panama City again, Hattiesburg, Jackson, and down towards Baton Rouge and New Orleans as well. Now the Weather Prediction Center here is outlining Portions of central Oklahoma, southwestern portions here of Missouri, southeastern uh, Kansas, northwestern Arkansas, and north central portions here of Texas on their day one excessive rainfall outlook of a marginal risk here of a flash flooding. A couple isolated instances of flash flooding are possible. This is outlined by the Weather Prediction Center. And then here tomorrow with that MCS developing in north central and east Texas and here in uh, moving eastward and propagating eastward into portions here of Arkansas, Louisiana, and Mississippi, a slight risk zone for flash flooding across those zones that have been rained on continuously for the past couple of weeks. And then also a large slight risk zone here as we head here into uh, Georgia, Alabama, northwest Florida Panhandle, up into the Carolinas here as we head into our day three Tuesday for flash flooding as well. That is by the uh, Weather Prediction Center. Now looking ahead here, 72 hours here from now, this goes all the way through Wednesday morning here on April 6th, and you can see a lot more additional rainfall across the south and southeast, around one to three inches with locally more here rainfall kind of centered on uh, Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia into the Carolinas. Also some cooler rains and some uh, just stratiform rainfall across portions of Wisconsin, getting into Illinois, the Great Lakes region around Lake Michigan. Some additional rain up in those locations as well uh, that could be exceeding or approaching here an inch in, uh, of rainfall in those areas as well. Looking ahead, this is the 6 to 10 day temperature outlook from the Climate Prediction Center it shows well below normal uh, uh, well below normal temperatures across the south east, the mid-Atlantic, and into the deep south as we head here all the way through the 12th time frame of uh, April. And then uh, the Pacific Northwest below average as well. Kind of the uh, inner mountain west here around the Rockies, the Four Corners region above normal, and then a little sliver into the northeast as well above normal. And then drier than normal across most of the northeast, the mid-Atlantic, the southeast, and the central and southern plains where above average precipitation expected across the Intermountain West, the northwest, the northern plains, up toward the Canadian border up in the uh, Montana region as well. That goes through the 12th here of April. 
And then we'll flip the script a little bit as we head toward the middle of April. A large ridge is expected to develop across the eastern two-thirds of the country. So warming temperatures even up into the Midwest, Great Lakes, Northeast, areas that have been cooler for a while. Going to see temperatures surging into the 60s and 70s as we head into the middle of April with another big trough coming down into the inner mountain west, the northwest, and the west coast with below average here precip uh, temperatures across those areas. And also here much above average precipitation across much of the country here as well with exception across the eastern seaboard in the southeast as we head through time. So thank you for watching my video. I hope that gave you insight on the severe weather here on the multi-severe weather uh, setup as we head through uh, the week this week. Be sure to like my video and to leave any comments and questions below. And remember to subscribe to my channel here. I'm trying to get to 100 by the middle and end of this month, so that will help me out. So thank you for watching my video and have a great day, everybody.